the earthquakes, shooting children, and the oh so silent. Shut up. Uh, 
additional callers, concerned citizens kept calling in to notify my partners that there was a gunman. As my partners were there, they were, they were conducting their investigation. It led them to the gunman's house uh, where they attempted to make peaceful contact with the gunman. Uh, four of my partners were there, and uh, unfortunately, a shooting occurred uh, uh, at my partners. My partners uh, returned fire, and, uh, and uh, unfortunately, we, uh, a person was killed in the process of that. Um, like, like Lieutenant Bennett said, uh, these things are a full investigation taking place. The investigation is a bifurcated investigation. Uh, detectives from the Internal Affairs Bureau and detectives from the Homicide Unit uh, conduct a parallel investigation to determine the facts of the shooting. On one hand, the, the objective is to determine did my partners follow policy and procedure uh, with their tactics, with their firearms, with their training. That's an internal investigation. The other investigation is like what Lieutenant Bennett was saying, is one that's criminal in nature to determine if the actions were justified, and that ultimately gets forwarded to the, uh, the district attorney's office for, for a final disposition, which may take some, some months from now. Um, if, if there are any, any questions, I may be able to answer them. Yes, yes ma'am. Any officers hurt? No, ma'am. Oh. Yes, sir. My grandson lives about two doors from where it happened. He said he heard the shots and told 911 and he said, Close your doors and shut your windows. He was very, he said, That area up there is very, very tiny. More drug than anything else. He's at gas that stolen out of his vehicles, out of the gas tank and everything else. But he's at less than a mile. Right. And, I, and, I, and I, I, would, I would tell anyone the similar things that the dispatcher told the grandson. If there is a, a lot of shooting, I, I would definitely shelter in place. I would definitely stay away from the windows. I would gather little ones and try to get on the far end of the property that's away from, from the actual gunshots. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm deeply sorry for what Our, our response. Uh, a shots fired call 
people screaming like you've been asked on the phone, is anyone screaming? That's going to get diverted in front of someone else's call just because of the nature of, of, of the crime itself. But you're saying you have to lie on the phone because we know you're not lying. I'm not telling you you have to lie on the phone. What I'm telling you is, is that everything's prioritized and you'll get a response. It just may not be the second that you want. But you will get a response. <clears throat> Something that I, that I would suggest, ma'am, with, with, with your situation is, uh, and, it's, and it's discretion of the deputy. There have been times when I have not called the person back because I thought it would be too late. And I didn't want to wait a moment. I'm, not, I'm just I saying totally hypothetical. Understand. I totally understand. And so, well, when, when, when the 911 operator asks you, do you want an officer to call you back? Correct. Yes, I do. I respond to that. Yes, I do. Yes. I don't care what time of day it is. Please call me and let me know that it's okay for me and my children and my grandchildren to walk outside and things are going to be okay. That's all I'm asking. I don't care what time it is. If you're calling me back to ensure that my safety or those are in my neighborhood are okay, then I expect that phone call. And again, time and time again, we do not get called back. We don't. I know for a fact that I have. I don't even bother to call 911 because what good is it going to do me? I'm going to get the same response every single time. Is someone screaming? Does it take somebody to scream in order to get a response? I understand priority. Yes, someone bleeding as opposed to someone not bleeding. I don't know that someone has not, not been shot in their home. You know, I need to know that we're safe. And I don't feel that. And it's been well over a year. I'm still waiting for that phone call. All I can say. I'll look it up and I'll call you here in a little bit. You call me anytime you want to be here. I will give you my personal numbers. You and I probably know each other. Just the last time we met, okay. I, had a, I had a lot of hair. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> and mine is right here. Probably about <laughs> okay. 15 years and, and ago. And some of these belong to you guys.
Did the shooter point the gun at the sheriff's officer? Or yes. Or the that and there was an exchange of gunfire. Between the sheriff and the shooter? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, I have a different question. Um, we live about as far to the east as you can get up on the Gatlin Hills. And across probably and like a half a mile or so on the top of another bridge, there's a little hundreds or something. There's folks that have been shooting over there for weeks on a we called the sheriff a hundred times. They said there's nothing we can do about it. I think the guys must have an ammo factory or something because there's a lot of them over there. And I'm curious as to what you can and cannot do if it's on your own property with respect to you know, shooting in a what I would call a very high fire area over here. And I think they probably set a fire probably a year ago last uh, May, uh, over Labor Day, Memorial Day. And I'm curious as to what, what recourse we have with respect to people that are shooting. We've had the sheriff out before when we get here, and nothing has happened, absolutely nothing. Okay. I mean, it I'll, sounds I'll, like a war. Over I'll interject a couple things because uh, we discuss this topic and I am uh, frequently at the meetings. Depending how far east you're talking about uh, determines on what part of the land it sits on. And so what you have to keep in mind is this is a rural community. You live here for a very specific reason. And I don't, only you know what those reasons are. However, there's a lot of territory up there that it is you are permitted to shoot firearms. And so it depends on where it's located. And, I, and I'm familiar with that old hillside. I'm not exactly sure what trailer you're referring to. Um, but there's a lot of BLM land up there. There's land that's, that's governed by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Fish and yeah, it's Wildlife now. And you're permitted to shoot on that property. And so perhaps some of the inquiries that you've had and we say we can't do anything is because it's not against the law to shoot your gun up there, depending on where they are. So does that help? Well, it might help a little bit. I'll, I'll ask uh, Mr. Bingham over here as to whether or not, you know, what the danger is of, of setting a fire when you're doing that. Well, last Memorial Day, it wasn't the shooters that set that fire. It was actually party goers that set that fire. Determined that uh, they held they held quasi raid party up there, and they're the ones that set the fire. But it's a possibility. It is a possibility. Um, but they're permitted to shoot there. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I this might seem like a silly question, but um, I, I have a neighbor that lives up that way, um, off of uh, Santa Rosa Mine Road, and her neighbor not only shoots but occasionally points the gun in her direction. And, you know, I, I, that sounds really illegal to me, is it? Well, you know, we, again, uh, and I would encourage all of you as community <coughs> members, if you, you know, have the opportunity to attend these meetings, uh, because these are the type of things we discuss and we go over these type of concerns. Um, first of all, that particular side of Santa Rosa Mine belongs to Lake Elsinore Station. It doesn't belong to, well, it's depending on, on where you are. It's on the north side. Depending on where you are. So the boundaries up there, and some of that territory you're referring to, sir, belongs to the Elsinore side. However, it's still the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. So one of the things we always encourage everybody, at any given time, doesn't matter where you're shooting, if you feel your safety's in jeopardy, please give us a call. And I can tell you that I monitor monthly stats. I monitor this area. I'm not responsible for managing the resources of the Sheriff's Department and what we deploy up here. I know the crime stats, I know the calls for service, and I can tell you that we respond every single time somebody requests a deputy sheriff. Well, the reason they haven't made the call, it sounds stupid to me, is because they said they haven't fired yet. You know, they have two small children. I'm thinking if the gun's pointed in their direction. You it may know. require an investigation yeah. from the deputy. I would encourage them to call. Yes, sir. Is there a firing range up in there by Christmas yes, sir. or something? Okay. You can hear the echo sometimes when they're really yes. popping them off. Yeah, there's, so there's a regulated fire fire range. That yeah, I know this one down there. I know that uh, I, I appreciate uh, 
hearing from you, uh, regardless of the concern, regardless of what the issue may be. Um, sometimes that's that's all we need. We just need to hear it. And that's why we're here. Um, and so give you an opportunity to speak. To answer your question, ma'am, this is one of the safest communities that we have in Riverside County. And I can say that with a great deal of certainty. With a great deal of certainty, I'll tell you why. Can you remember the last time somebody died in this particular area by felonious assault? No. It's an isolated incident. Do we live in communities where there's absent of criminal behavior? Absolutely. It's not realistic. It doesn't happen anywhere. We wouldn't have a job. I wish it did. I can tell you that I choose to live up here in this community for that exact reason. For that exact reason. You're very sick. That's unfortunate. I feel I, I, that's unfortunate. Um, but I can tell you the calls for service, the type of crimes that we investigate up here, in comparison to other communities, we're very safe. Extremely safe. Okay, are his guns allowed to be shot between Cajon, Hidalgo, Aragon, and all of it? And, and that's, that covers my neighborhood? No. No? Okay. But no. in the fields? Then no. Not in the residential area. Okay. And that's the streets you just named, so yes, that would be no. It covers my neighborhood. Provide, it would provide a, a significant safety risk to the residents. Okay. Ma'am, do, do you have questions? Yeah, I was wondering how we can control these drug houses. Control what? The drug houses. Yeah, give us a call. I can help continue to, to I take certain calls, uh, but I can tell you I don't get I don't get too many. I do not get too many for concerned citizens that they, they suspect criminal activity involving drug sales. Now, are we going to keep the people up that we're in all this mess we have? Repeat the question. Are we going to keep this criminal people? I don't, I don't know what you're referring the, to. The group of people that were in the drug group. Club. There was one person involved in this incident. So, my understanding, they're still living. No. The mothers, the mothers moved out of the area. The mother is right, right here. here. Oh, okay. No, there is someone true. living on that in that home. There's some. There's one seven zero four five Aragon. There is someone. Well, that's a great. That that's a great uh, prelude because I think you wanted an opportunity to speak. Absolutely. So we're having to pull my phone back for. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Introduce you. Okay. Stephanie. Okay. This is Stephanie, the mother of the uh, son, unfortunately, that uh, the incident. So she likes to say the words. Very sorry. Very sorry. Very sorry. Very sorry. Very sorry. Very sorry. Okay. For just a little while, my son was sick. There's. He's a dialysis patient. He's 19. Um, my son was in a lot of pain. I don't know about all the shots and all the other stuff, but my son, I know, wanted to couldn't take the pain. Um, he lay with my son for two weeks, begging my son. He tried to take his life so many different ways that I can't take it. He said, We have other kids to raise. He didn't live with. I live near, I live in my area, I live in the whole. There's so much pain in his death. I'm just going to, he went to a legal shooting range or whatever they, someone took him and he shot his gun. And he was practicing, I guess, to, because he's, if, if there's one way for sure that, I will die, and I'll die. And that's the police, the other police will kill me because I'm black. I'm young. If I should kill you, I should be bad. There's nothing to do with this car. Nothing to do with this car. She's telling her story. I'm telling her story. She's telling her story. My son told me this is my son. My son died. Yes. I'm telling you, 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 I'm telling you,
This was not about drugs. It was not about drugs. It was personal. He was in pain. He wanted to please the He told him. Were you going to bring your state in your home? You're a single mother of three children. How much income do you get? Don't you? How much? Is there any way a community can come together and help a mother?
constant trail of tweakers going past my to house. that house. And, and I don't mean to be blunt, but have you ever reported that to law enforcement? Yes. Have you reported that to law enforcement? <laughs> See, but you never tried it. So what good is that? Is that if I receive that information, housed in the in the Paris station, I have the West County Narcotics Task Force that has several members responsible for county area. That I can we can allocate those resources to particular problems. But until the problem comes to our attention, we can't allocate those resources. And you live close by. Three houses away. Yeah. And I see the traffic. And I see the numb schools at night in the middle of the night squealing around corners in the transactions and all that. It's there. Yeah. And everybody follows. Can you call us? Can you call us? I have three times. Yeah. We can just like it those summation. And yeah. never got anything. Yeah. You need to request the deputy to, to make contact at your house. So you'll know that we've been there. A lot of times we arrive and we do things without your knowledge of it. So just like we explained to you, if you want that phone call back, or I want personal presence of the deputy to make contact with. Can, can I say something? The house right behind me, I'm next to Roland's house, which is a huge tweaker house, and right behind me is another tweaker house. I've had to call at least 25 times, and it's finally broke that house. So you got to really call and call and put your time in. And with Roland, I'm working on it. I'm working on Roland's house. That's an argument. Because one of four neighbors that watch TV the bridge. Um, feel free to come back to the meeting. I'm going to leave some business cards on the back. Um, and has my my last number. Call me up with the information that you have. We are here. We are here. Okay. Thank you. myself when I first requested the sign, so they do have to be moved. So that's kind of on the back burner until we deal with another issue, which I will touch on now. Uh, Daily Ranch development, you guys know about that one? That was the one that was uh, Wood and Calico there. We've had a couple meetings on here. It was approved this morning, so it, it did go through. So uh, a couple of years, you'll probably see some houses there. But that we did request no lights. The developer did request no lights as well, but the planning commission felt it was uh, in the best interest of safety. And so they put the minimal amounts of lights in. So that you will get lights on corners and intersections. In that area there, so. um, Temesco Valley, I don't know if you guys know where Temesco Valley is. It's down the hill down there in Corona. Corona's looking to annex that, that area there. Um, it is Corona. a concern to us. It's not a major concern because it's Corona, but they are our neighbors right there. And if Corona annexes it, you know, Corona gets that much closer to us. Well. They're as much Corona as you guys are Paris. They're not Corona. Not now. No, not now. And they want to annex them into Corona. Absolutely. So if they do annex them into Corona, then we might have Corona a little closer to our door. Something to think about. Um, also, uh, with the general plan changes, Tomesco's Mac boundary is coming right to the border of ours. So if Corona does annex, again, it might be right at our door. So just to let you guys know, um, you can learn more at the noannexation.org. And uh, we'll probably circulate some stuff on this one. Can you give me just a rough idea of what are our boundaries? I can. I'm going to go through that in just a sec here, actually. Thank you. Absolutely. So the next thing is boundaries. <laughs> uh, we've had a lot of requests. In 2010, our boundaries have shrunk. In 2001, we originally got our COI approved from LAFCO, and COI means community of interest. And our, 
original boundary lines were here, and I know it's kind of rough to tell because there's no streets, but La Sierra here, it's kind of a little uh, further down in the archery center. Uh, this is Mockingbird Canyon, where it hits uh, Van Buren. This would be Wood and Cahalco, roughly. Actually, this is a little further east. Uh, this was back in 2001. This has since been eroded away, uh, little by little, by all kinds of issues. I won't get into all of them tonight. Uh, but there has been an issue with some of this area over here that had been moved into the Woodcrest Mac area back in 2010. We opposed it, we fought it, we got residents to try and stand up against it, and um, unfortunately the then supervisor pushed it through on us anyways. So it happened, we kind of moved forward, and now we're getting a lot of interest from the residents in that area wanting to come back into our area. So with that, I'm going to just kind of go over the little boundary lines here. This was the original Woodcrest map boundaries um, prior to 2010. Uh, there's an area, they swapped it in 2010 and gave them some of our area here. Um, reason for doing that from what I've read, I can't confirm, but I've read because the city website annexed this and so gave them this in trade for that. So this area here was taken from us. This was the area we fought and we're told all kinds of bad words and things. And told us, you know, you're not a community group, you know, and so took it anyways, regardless of our opposition. So we didn't continue fighting it, we just, okay, I guess we lost. And uh, but again, recently we've had a lot of people come to us in that area. We have a lot of members from the community that live there that come to these meetings that have been asking to get these boundaries back. So we thought, okay, well, we'll try and uh, get something going on getting that back. So this is the area we would like to see back, this red here, which was our original boundary area including the boulders development there. The original boulders developer, Dennis, uh, wanted to be a part of our Lake Matthew COI, and uh, we told him he could be at the time he was, and he's since been taken out. So we'd like to get that back as well. Again, we have some boulder residents here, yes, Tony. Uh, let's make it clear that the land we're sitting on right now is considered Woodcrest. The land we're sitting on right now is considered technically Woodcrest. If you look at the uh, area, there's where we are today. Again, this room was built for us, but it was in Woodcrest, so you know it's just a gray area. It's an open area. I also own a home over here, so I want to be a part of Lake Matthews. I live up here now in the plateau, but I own another home here too, so I want my home in Lake Matthews, as many people in there do. So this is the area we're going to try and get back. Make any promises? Don't know if we'll get opposition or if we'll get lots of support. Don't know. But what we're going to try and do is circulate some petitions. I do have a meeting with Supervisor Jeffries. Uh, set up in the next week or so, and I'm going to address it with him and see what we can do about it. But uh, we will probably need a lot of community support. So if anybody lives in this area, is interested in coming back into our area, please sign our petition over there. If you want to help walk streets and get signatures or whatnot, I can get you a petition as well to do that, and it'll be great. If you don't live in that area, we'd still love to have your signatures because, you know, you have a say too. you like that back in your community. So we have two separate petitions if you're interested in that. So, um, that's all I really have to update you guys on. I'll put this on the website too, and uh, again, keep an eye out for it. If anybody wants to stop for it, or anything else. So. Uh, I'm going to take a break for a moment. Anyone to break? <coughs>